Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. They achieved what many thought at the time to be unachievable, a self-sustaining army for the Gambia, the smallest country on mainland Africa. That's the fascinating story of lifelong soldier Trevor Stewart, his amazing story in the book, How We Built the Gambia Army, the story of a small team defying the odds, dealing with financial shortages and the Gambian government's inefficiencies, their hard work, awe-inspiring. Trevor has had a very interesting life, a life that has virtually taken him around the world and back again. A long-term career soldier, he joined the Army when he was just 15, a 30-year military career with a reputation of working hard and playing hard. He earned a number of promotions before retiring in 1992 as a major. His goal was always to help those less fortunate, devoting much of his spare time to helping to raise much-needed funds for many charities and organizations. He's an accomplished author, feature articles in a number of publications, author of the book Fishing Marks for the Sea Angler, and now author of How We Built the Gambia Army, Trevor Stewart, with us on This Week in America from the United Kingdom. Trevor, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Yeah, great to be with you. This is a fascinating book, how you went in with a, with a group of, of others, a small group of others, and started an army for this country. Let's just sort of do a little geography and history before we get started here. Give me a little bit of background on Gambia. For most people, they may never have heard of it before. I'm not surprised. When I was asked to go to the Gambia, I hadn't heard of it either, strangely enough. Uh, but it is the smallest country in West Africa. In fact, on the whole of the African continent. Um, it's pr approximately 280 miles in depth going in, into Africa, and at its widest part of the mouth, it is only nine miles wide. It's and interesting that the history of that, historical roots with the slave trade for a number of years, I understand. Absolutely right. Um, yeah. Most of the slave trading was actually done from the from the Gambia River, of course, which goes straight out into the Atlantic. So that was a, a straight route across uh, across the Atlantic to the USA. And an impoverished coverage, uh, country as well. We'll talk about that when we talk about the government uh, lack of funding to do equipment and training, that, that type of thing. But this is a country that's a, it's a poor country, isn't it? It is indeed. Um, it, it, it's su survival now is uh, literally through tourism, you know, and many, many, um, from when I actually come back to now, there's somewhere in the region of 80 to 85 hotels being built. It's just, it's amazing. The book we're talking about is How We Built the Gambia Army. Trevor Stewart, our guest on the program, the author. Uh, it's interesting when I'm looking up uh, Gambia, I see a coup, attempted coup, coup. We'll get into that and in talking about this a number of times, uh, uprisings in the country. Talk about the, the British government and their interest in building up and, and, and protecting the country and, and sending you and others in to, to start an army for them. How did that whole come about and your involvement? Well, in, in fact, it, it all started back in 1983, uh, and uh, when there was a coup about to be overtaken by the Senegalese, um, and as a result, the the president, one of the president's wives, uh, was taken hostage, and they uh, pleaded with the British army to uh, send in the special forces uh, to actually uh, get the the president and his wives out of the country. It's interesting when you look back at this, there was an attempted coup that cost the lives of thousands of, of Gambians back in like 1981. No standing army since 1958. So how did you end up in this team and what was the size of the team that was sent in to, to build an army from basically the ground up? That, that, that's right, absolutely right. Um, in fact, there were, I had four guys, four uh, young warrant officers who uh, were out there with us, who were professionals in their own field, whether it was explosives, uh, drill, drill uh, jungle work warfare, <clears throat> and an engineer as well. Uh, once we'd actually located uh, an old chicken farm, which is what we used for the, uh, for the headquarters for the army, uh, once it had been cleaned up, it wasn't too bad. So it needed a lot of repair, mind, because uh, that that was another English um, uh, 
experiment really to set up a chicken farm in the Gambia uh, but uh, it didn't work because on two occasions uh, they got uh, bird flu and literally all the birds literally died of flu so uh, the the accommodation was there and the president awarded us to uh, get on with the job if we could. Yeah, and they turned you loose, and you basically, and we'll go through the process, you had to recruit, you had to train, you had to find a place to train, which, which, you, which you did have. You even had to come up with a clerical staff to, uh, to, to handle all the paperwork involved with, in the Army. Let's start with the recruiting process. I understand you went to uh, a local radio station and went on for a period of time looking for recruits, and you had some good recruits that came forward. Absolutely. It was with Radio Gambia, um, which at the time was set up at the Santa Gambia Hotel. Um, and they put their whole body in, into it. Um, I gave a couple of uh, short lectures. Um, and before we knew it, um, to recruit of a Saturday morning, uh, because of course we were all working from Monday to Friday, so the recruiting took place on Saturday mornings. And occasionally we ended up with over 400 people turning up to be recruited because yet we could only make selections um, of approximately four, between 40 and 50 guys each Saturday um, and we are we needed to actually raise a total and train a total of 1,500 guys uh, for over um, operations and looking after the president, basically, so the same thing doesn't happen again. You talk in the book, and the book is how we built the Gambia Army. Trevor Stewart, the author and the gentleman involved in the uh, in establishing an army for the Gambia, is our guest on this week in America. And by the way, it's a republished book now available for sale in ebook and paperback at its lowest retail price. Available for sale in all Amazon sites, Barnes & Noble, Page Turner Press, and Media Direct Orders, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia and New Zealand. You can link on directly to all that information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You talk in the book how impressed you were, again, with the, with the recruits. You had some that were highly educated and physically fit. These were not people just looking for a job. These were people that were committed and wanted to be in the army absolutely um, predominantly that they wanted to protect the, the president uh, because in the gambia of course there are five dominant tribes um, and those who worked in the same tribe as the president of course could have been the, the ones who were setting up and thinking about starting future coups to overrun the president so um Given the chance, we had to uh, recruit um, sort of 50 50 across uh, yes. other tribes. Talk about how you went about selecting. How did you, and I understand you had a little test that you, a little scenario you would run by these people to see how they would think. What was that process like to, to narrow it down to a manageable group that you could use to form the army? Well, I, I actually uh, set. Um, scenarios together each time we used to go around all the villages in the country uh, on uh, a recruiting tour uh, we used to do it three times a year uh, and we used to we were always welcome with open arms because of course these people in the villages couldn't afford to travel down into the Yunda where we were actually based so for us to go out to these villages, uh, they appreciated it more than anything else. And it was like you know, killing the, the fatty after feed, you know, feed the 40,000. Yes. It really was. You know, what's interesting is you established this army from the ground up. How did you go about structuring the army? You're familiar with the, you know, the, the British army and... Uh, uh, much, much larger in size and in scope. How did you go about structuring the, the Gambia army? Well, I mean, it, it's easy for me to sit there and say, yes, we did it. Um, however, <laughs> you know, when, when we look at it in reality, um, time was the, 
something which we didn't have a lot to do because we didn't know what was going to be stabbing us in the back the next day sort of thing, you know. Um, and as I, as I said in the book, you know, it, it was a fading country, basically. Um, and the president wanted it to be revi- not just revived, but wanted the British to come in to see if they could save it. Because it was a British, um, uh, British under British rule during colonial times, you know. And you found some good soldiers there. In fact, some, I think, ended up uh, doing some training over here in the U.S., Absolutely, yeah. We, we we ended up with um, a lot of the guys. Well, so there were about eight eight of the guys actually went off to the states, Fort Worth, and uh, all all around, um, learning to be engineering officers, uh, administrative officers, quartermasters, um, etc. And of course, in, in, infantry officers as well. I mean, that was one of the one of the big cries to fame of the Gambia. And it might give you a better idea of some of the guys. We had uh, two guys go off to Pakistan um, for officer training, and one of them ended up winning the Sword of Honor, which was actually originally presented from Wilkinson. Uh, impressive. Uh, yeah, and the, and that that guy, um, Mr. Gomez ended up being the right-hand man for the president for the rest of the, well, certainly until President Juara, uh, who was the president at the time, uh, ended up being his right-hand man until the president was actually over- overtaken. Uh, with a, There was still were a couple of more coups, of course. Um, and uh, then eventually uh, the Senegalese got their own way. We're talking about the book, How We Built the Gambia Army. Trevor Stewart is our guest on the program. Book's available at pageturner.us. Amazon will go through the list here in in a few seconds. You can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, to get information on the book. It's interesting. I mentioned the lack of funding. Improvisation was a word that you used frequently, I understand, as you were building the army. If something was, uh, was broken, you didn't replace it. You just fixed it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. That that was a bone of contention. Um, and if I if I tell you about the the fact that we had um, two broken down generators in a chicken farm, as was, um, and to to get shells to fit the pistons was not a void. So we could get oversized uh, piston rings, and I had to get. These young guys, who I was teaching to be engineers, uh, honing down with a carborandum stone the the rings so they can be fitted into a 45 kVA generator to get it working again. And as it still happens to this day, that generator was repaired by these young guys, and it is still working to this day. In the book, How We Built the Gambia Army, we we come to know a number of the local celebrities that you write about. I mentioned your passion for helping the less fortunate. You spearheaded a charity movement there to help a young Gambian boy receive what was life-saving surgery. Talk about that, because as you're building the army, you're still looking out for the for the Gambian people as well. Absolutely. Yeah, it, 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 it's something which, which I suppose has come around with my build-up. Um, uh, I suppose it's been a lifetime, my own lifetime strategy. But uh, yes, I, I, I was introduced to this young fa- uh, Gambian family by the name of Jeng, and the young young lad by Jeng um, needed open heart surgery. So I uh, took advantage of speaking to a couple of people when I was back on on leave from uh, from the country, and started the ball rolling and s- set up a, a trust fund for this young man. And did a lot of fundraising uh, through expat communities in the country. Now, when I say expat communities, uh, there were Canadian organisations, there were US organisations, um, who were only too willing to help. And I uh, got the leaders of these organisations to do a bit of fundraising on, on behalf of this young man. And strangely enough, within a very short period of time, the money started to roll in. 
Um, and every, it, it, it seems difficult to imagine now, but up until um, a couple of years ago, I had a letter from uh, the Gambia. In fact, it was from the British High Commissioner. Um, I said, Trevor, all this money which you left behind, now I didn't have a clue how much it was, which was still in the account, as I said, it was left in trust with the Standard Chartered Bank. And uh, as a result, there were over £200,000 wow. in the account. And I was, it was a request to me to say, could they use it for other such cases as was the case of Bai Jiang. Uh, because we managed to get him back to Holland, uh, to The Hague, and his mother came with him as well, and uh, had his open heart surgery, stayed in hospital for five weeks uh, whilst he was uh, recovering, or being able to uh, travel back to the Gambia. And then when he, when he came back, we subsequently found that we'd hardly used any of the money from the trust fund. So as I said, there was, there was in excess of £200,000 left behind in that account, just sitting there gaining interest. You know, And this was some 20 years after I left the country. Yeah, you talk about the government inefficiencies. The book is How We Built the Gambia Army. Trevor Stewart is our guest in the program, the author. Got to, a couple of minutes left and I'll go through the, where the book is available here. As you look back, I'm assuming the Gambia has a special place in your heart. I don't know if you go back, how often you go back, but it has to be a special feeling to think what you did there. I mean, you went in and, again, pretty much did uh, uh, what they thought was unachievable. You were able to go in and to give them a, uh, a, a solid army. What's this whole experience been like for you? Um, it, it was surreal, really. Um, I quite often reflect uh, on what we actually went out there for, um, because it happened all very quickly. Uh, I mean, I was actually selected to go out there um, because of my former British, British Modern Pentathlon Association. Uh, and as a result, it was said, if you can train these people to do what you've done, then you know, there won't be anything left for you to do in your in your lifetime. Uh, so I found that you know, the whole episode of being out there rather rather, or as it said, surreal, but almost the fact that I feel as if I left a good part of my body in the country itself. Yes, and that that was quite true. It's when I actually came back in in the uh, November of 1989, um, the president hosted a, a dinner, a farewell dinner for us. And it was at the Senegambia Hotel, where I'd actually been staying. And flight was a, a British uh, Caledonian Airways flight, which was meant to take off from the Gambia airfield at midnight. And at quarter to twelve, we were still at this dinner. <laughs> and I, I just turned around to the Minister of Protocol and said, look, we've got to get away. And the President said, Mr. Stewart, I am holding the aircraft for you. And when, it, when the dinner actually finished, which was about half past midnight, so all the tourists and everybody else on this aircraft had already been delayed by half an hour. We were actually taken, driven to the airport um, with, with the president's outriders. So there was nothing going to stop us. So there were 15 miles. It took us about eight minutes. Well, in, in the Gambia, if you understand the state of the roads, that was miraculous anyway. <laughs> uh, but, but when we actually got to, to the airport, um, the car pulled up. And the, the route from outside the airport to the aircraft uh, were about 350 of the soldiers we trained uh, guiding us to the aircraft. When I was going up the steps of the aircraft, um, there was one of the buglers from the band who was play, playing us out 
playing the last post as we actually went onto the aircraft. And I, I just turned around and I was actually totally overcome with it. You know, I just gave a wave. I couldn't say anything. Yes. And uh, that was it, really. Um, but yes, I've been back there once since. Uh, but of course, it's never the same when you go back as a visitor to when you were uh, actually there doing the job, you know. Well, you left the mark on the Gambia. The book we're talking about, How We Built the Gambia Army, Trevor Stewart, uh, who helped build the uh, the Gambia Army, very instrumental in, in what they were able to do and accomplish there. The author and our guest on the program. The book is a republished book, now available for sale in ebook and paperback at its lowest retail price. Available for sale in uh, all Amazon sites, Barnes & Noble, Page Turner Press, and Media Direct Orders. Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia and New Zealand, and uh, and a lot more places. And again, uh, you can link on directly to all of that at thisweekinamerica.us. Uh, just very briefly, a minute or so left in the program, I know you worked with Paige Turner on putting the book together, getting it published, getting it out there, and people reading it. What has that experience been like for you in, in working with Paige Turner? Well, in fact, um, I, I've had rather indifferent experiences with a, with a number of uh, publishers on a lot of other charity um, bits and pieces I've had put together. Uh, but I must admit, I, I can put my hand on my heart and say that I found Paige Turner to be professional, in, very professional, in what they've actually achieved, uh, bringing these, my, my latest two books back to life, if you like. Um, and I'm really looking forward to doing a lot more work with them. And that's Paige Turner, located in the U.S., and the website is very simple, pageturner.us. Trevor Stewart, thank you so much for joining us on the program. I know you're working on other projects. Would love to have you back. It was a fascinating read, How We Built the Gambia Army. Thank you so much for sharing that story with us on the program today. All right, thanks very much, Rick. You're listening to This Week in America on the website thisweekinamerica.us. You'll find information on Trevor Stewart and his book, How We Built the Gambia Army. That's it, thisweekinamerica.us. Back after these messages. <laughs> 